Ronald Wayne Van Zant, frontman and songwriter for the most southern of the southern rock bands, Leonard Skinnerd, was born January 15, 1948, in Jacksonville, Florida. His father, Lacey, a former prize fighter, made sure young Ronnie and his two brothers, Donnie and Johnny, learned how to use their fists from an early age, a trait that would characterize much of Leonard Skinnerd's time on the road. But even a monkey brought up in the right surroundings can learn the meaning of decency and honesty. Although Ronnie Van Zant, named after his father's favorite movie star, Ronald Reagan, showed promise as a baseball player, his real love was music. He formed his first band, My Backyard, while still in high school. The band, which included guitarists Alan Collins and Gary Rossington, and drummer Bob Burns, eventually changed its name to Leonard Skinner. The name was meant to mock a gym teacher who disapproved of guys with long hair. predecessors, the Allman Brothers, bluesier, more freewheeling southern rock sound, Leonard Skinner's sound was more lyrical and structured. Thanks in large part to Van Zandt's admiration for the Rolling Stones and other bands from the 1960s British Invasion. Despite his reputation as a heavy drinker and brawler, Van Zandt's musical talents were complemented by a strong work ethic. He often forced the band to practice for hours on end until he felt they'd achieved the right sound. By 1970, on the strength of a demo record, the band was offered a record deal, which Van Zant declined. Although the start of the decade was inauspicious, it would see the band achieve phenomenal success, followed by extreme tragedy. In 1972, Leonard Skinner, whose lineup still included Van Zant, Collins, Burns, and Rossington, in addition to bassist Leon Wilkinson, and at times Ed King, and the band's former roadie, Billy Powell on keyboards, were signed to the subsidiary of MCA Records and began working on their first album. The self-titled LP was released August 13, 1973, and featured the songs Gimme Three Steps, Simple Man, Tuesday's Gone, and what would become the band's anthem, Freebird. If I leave it's The ballad, written by Collins and Van Zant, was originally dedicated to Dwayne Allman and later to Barry Oakley. The two members of the Allman Brothers, whose success had opened the doors for Leonard Skinner, had died tragically in motorcycle accidents within a year of each other. On a side note, a year earlier, Van Zant had married for the second time. His wife Judy had previously dated Greg Allman. The band's debut album was a massive success, propelled in part by the band opening up for the Who's Quadrophenia Tour. As the band's fan base expanded, so too did Van Zant's arrest record and penchant for violence. During the band's many years of touring, Billy Powell would lose two teeth to Van Zant's fists, while Ellen Rossington's hands would be gored with a broken bottle. Not that the other members were angels in any way, but as Van Zant's mother once said in an interview, they were all mean, but Ronnie was the meanest of them all. Despite the internal fighting, the band released their second album, Second Helping, in 1974. The album featured the band's biggest hit single to date, Sweet Home Alabama. Sweet home, Alabama. Leonard Skinner's grueling tour schedule began to wear on its members. Bob Burns left the band and was replaced by drummer Artemis Pyle. Pyle made his debut on the band's 1975 album, Nothing Fancy. A song from that LP, Saturday Night Special, had been featured in the 1974 film, The Longest Yard. After the album was finished, Ed King was terminated from the band and replaced by Steve Gaines. In 1976, the band released its fourth album, Gimme Back My Bullets, which included the hits Gimme Back My Bullets, Searching, Double Trouble, and Cry for the Bad Man. By 1977, following the birth of his second daughter, Van Zant began to ponder a more sedate, family-oriented life. The band began working on their fifth album and planned their biggest tour to date. Van Zant was particularly excited about a forthcoming gig at New York's Madison Square Garden, the band's first ever at the famous venue, which represented Leonard Skinner's acceptance into the rock world's super elite. On October 20th, 1977, only one week before the band was scheduled to perform in New York, 
Their plane went down in Mississippi after running out of fuel. They're sitting against the tree is a piece of an airplane wing torn away from the rest of the airplane. Lying down there at the base of the tree... Is Ronnie the Van Zant was killed instantly. He was 29 years old. The band's album, Street Survivors, had been released three days earlier. The original album cover was quickly replaced because it showed the band surrounded by flames. Steve Gaines and his sister, Cassie, a backup singer, also died. Ronnie Van Zant and Steve Gaines were laid to rest at Jacksonville Memorial Gardens in Orange Park, Florida. After vandals desecrated their remains in 2000, Van Zant was reburied at Riverside Memorial Park in Jacksonville. Ronnie Van Zant fought his way from Jacksonville, Florida to the top of the music world and into rock and roll legend stratospheres. In a few short years, he helped define not just a musical genre, but a cultural attitude. His lyrics expressed emotions that belied his rough and tumble persona and hinted at greater things to come. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe.